everybody. Hope you're well. The long-awaited video is here. In this video you get to have a look around the newly kitted out crafter van done by All Things Timber, Joe and Eddie. Um, we look at uh, the power oaks we've put in it. I found a company that supply mattresses for camper vans and uh, motorhomes that do different shapes and all different configurations. So you don't have to go through the process of uh, buying a standard one and trying to cut it down with a bread knife. But you'll get to have a look around the setup of the van, how we've designed it, what we've decided to put in, all the nice finishing touches, the power supplies we've fitted into it, all the electronics, um, the power up systems we've linked to it as well. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'm sorry it's taken a while to come, but uh, there's a hell of a lot of work gone into this van. a time when I was lonely I was trying hard to get by taking day by day but baby then you came along I know I never felt that strong nothing's gonna hold us down yeah we are taking I know you've all been asking to look at it and instead of me showing you around it let's get the guy who built it so this is Adi from All Things Timber and he's done all the work on it all the fitting out and everything else let's have a look all right Adi show us around it right. show us what you've done look let's at my fun let's have some lights on so we've put two strip lights in the roof that are on a touch button here you press and hold it we can dim the lights down and bring them right down for you or we can bring them back up again. We've also got the same fitting under here and we've also got the same fitting to bring our lights around the rear. Again, all dimmable. We can turn those down. All the cabinets are made from oak uh, and it's a mixture of veneered board and solid oak. All the framing um, is traditional radius. Um, all the doors are on push catches, which is pretty standard affair for camper vans, but all matching. Um, we've also got some little features, nice drawer for bits and pieces with cutlery that slides across so you can access both sides. And it's also removable on some little feet so you can put it out on a table. Um, just a little touch. Inside the big cupboard, water containers with a dropout vent uh, and a uh, a louvre vent there for the uh, air bushbacker. Yep. Words out, the words um, In here we've got gas, again with a dropout vent, uh, connections to the hose ready to connect onto the bottle. And the gas alarm's in there as gas well. Gas alarm in there as well. All the overhead lockers are all on uh, these little spring stays, which are pretty strong, hold the lids up. Um, and plenty of storage as you can see around the van. I'm sure Joe will fill it. I'm sure so. <laughs> Um, this one here above the cab, a lot of space up there, huge storage cupboard is that one. And I like it that it's not too low as well, so there's the, 
there's plenty of headroom there is there plenty of headroom well. when you're driving it doesn't feel like there's anything above you either it's uh, and it's still high enough that you can use your um, yeah. original shelving that was because in here. we fill them full of junk and yeah. i love the wood on there as well rather than the carpet yeah that's nice is that it just matches in with the rest of the cabinets um and you've matched all the laminates as well haven't you yeah on, all on the, the veneers uh, what's called book matching so down the center of each panel you can see the grain flows through and on this panel it runs down runs down runs down these panels that are in these drawers and this top panel were all cut out of one piece so that is the same grain that runs straight through same on here same on here same on the fridge same on this drawer and same on there any of the bigger cupboards we try and match them the smaller cupboards not so much because it's difficult to do um, TV mounted in its original place, but obviously on a slightly better bracket and just tucked up in between the two. I made a bit of bent metal. That's what Ed is saying. That my bit of bent metal is put on a proper bracket. Yeah, two metal bars as opposed to a metal bar, proper bracket. Um, and in here we've got uh, go sorry, that. 12 volt and uh, there's a switch to the side, to the left, which turns on exterior lights. Yeah, they're my floodlights when I'm fishing or we've got the barbecue out or something. I'm just going to squeeze up on here. In the back of this one, we have a monitor for the CCTV and the obligatory karaoke machine. Yeah, we can't, we've got to have that for maybe it's karaoke. <laughs> <laughs> and it is a radio as well, of course. And all the cabling for all of that, and CCTV and the speakers and the TV and the sockets, everything is tucked into the back of that cupboard. So it's kept all of the other cupboards clear, which allows more space, more storage. Um, speakers mounted uh, for the karaoke machine, dedicated to that. Cup holders for at night. The they're volt. nice mugs there, maybe. They're not bad they're, mugs, they're, 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 they're mugs there, maybe. They're all right. Um, 12 volt sockets above both the uh, mug shelves, so you can plug a phone in and sit it at the side and charge that overnight as well. Um, and then, as you step down, the buddy seat you used to have a toilet that you'd have to lift off the pad and move everything. And what we've done now is this door will open and it'll go up to the sliding door, and then the toilet comes out. How good's that? Easy to lift on and off for emptying little storage point at the side there for your loo rolls um, and then it just sits back in it's on runners underneath as well uh, so drawer runners and rollers underneath so it actually sits on the floor so there's no stress on the drawer runners when they come in and out when people sit down on it um, and then just as an extra at either side uh, let's take that off at either side of the fixed top now which is done for strength We've just got storage compartments down both sides, just utilising as much space as we can. And this one here, at the back, has got my battery cutoff switch, 12 volt supply and the main supply as well for the hookup. Yep. Um, all linked to uh, my other power supplies in the back. Um, these are uh, three drawers just for bits and pieces, one short one at the top and then these two are the same depth. Um, underneath this one down there and then at the bottom the original herbage backer heater the blower vent is down there to produce warm air into the middle of the van so it'll sort of spread out and it's near the bed and there's another outlet that goes out in the back uh, where the batteries are which I'll show you in a minute so you can warm the garage and it also will warm underneath the bed um, we've put this across the door to hide the original factory uh, Volkswagen loom and there's other cabling that our Electrician Shane from Motorsparks is fitted um, for cabling for lights and go forward for the GPS things, etc. Et and all the, the cabling's hidden and everything's hidden just apart from the heater display here, which is the only thing that, that we the, decided not to put in a cupboard. <laughs> it's the only compromise because <laughs> it needs to read the temperature. So we, we had to mount that visually, whereas everything else is tucked away. And the worktop? Worktop is for Mica. Um, same with the uh, splash packs around the windows and on the sliding door window to match and the edging is um, it's based on the original Volkswagen Devon. It's just that little touch in it, yeah, the classic touch. So it, it is a sort of a, a nod to the classic vehicles. Um, the fridge we've taken off the original surround that was on here which is the wide face mounted surround um, because they're, they're quite wide and with this radius corner it yeah. sticks out too much here you don't need it there's fixings in the fridge anyway so we've put those in um, so that's uh, a neater job uh, just in there and the table's going to fit on here the table will slide on we'll there we're just waiting for there. the legs for that aren't we yeah we're just waiting for the wood turner to produce some legs but the table will live there 
and and stay down there when it's uh, in storage. And the top of the table is going to be in the same formica. It as this, is. Isn't the it? top of the table is going to be an inset of the formica with an oak surround um, to bring out the details of the rest of the van. And the details for this bed, I got this bed from a company which have been absolutely amazing. So we looked all over the place and we didn't want to have a mattress from IKEA and cut it down with a bread knife like uh, many people have to. So we found this company on the internet and I'll put all the links into the into the description below. Stacy who works for them was absolutely brilliant and really really helpful. She can sort out your shape, your size, the thickness and tells you which type of materials are available and if you want a cool one, if you want one that's resistant to mold and different um, how soft you want it, how hard it needs to be. But they have been absolutely amazing with this because I was thinking of having a different shaped one. So I was in touch with them a number of times and saying, oh, can I have one that's this size? Or can I have one that's this shape? And they can basically do almost what anything you need. And it's all mail order and you can ring them up and have a conversation about them. So if you're looking to build a camper van and you want a good mattress, a quality mattress, or if you're replacing yours in your camper van or your motor home, certainly check them out. In the back, these was originally carpeted and there was a plastic board on here and these have obviously all been pla uh, replaced to match because I'll fasten all my gear on here and my wetsuits and everything that, that goes in the back, I hang them up there to dry. But in the back here, we've had some significant changes made. I'll just put the light on so there's lights under here so we can see what we're doing. And then at the back there, Want to talk us through that, Eddie? Well, that's the um, battery uh, controller, uh, sorry, battery charger, solar controller. Um, there is a battery monitor on there, the BMV. Obviously, all the fuses, um, all linking to the to the two batteries that are now hidden behind that box. So they so this big box here has got my 500 and I think it's 40 odd amp hours of battery in there. That's correct, yeah. And, and it's tucked away now so that there's no danger of, of anything hitting the terminals and shorting the batteries out. Um, they're just protected in there now. And there's the heat event from the Herbishbacker bringing warm air into the garage area for drying and, and warming, etc. And you fitted that box in that way so it's chamfered, so I just have to undo four screws and I can lift that out. That's can't correct, I? yeah. If you, if you just uh, take the four screws out, it'll lift up slightly and then come away so it can be uh, access to the batteries fairly easily. So all that gear in there is Victron gear and that was fitted by. It's by Shane Cooper from uh, Moto Sparks. Um, he does all the electrics on all of my conversions. Um, it's a black art, what he knows. 100 years ago, he'd been burnt as, as a witch for the details that he does. Um, <laughs> he is obsessive of adding cables. <laughs> Fuses and cables and neatness and tidiness. That's his, that's his well, you two fit together well, don't you? you, you do, you're obsessive with the wood and the, the fitting. Timber. That's right, he's obsessed with cables and, and how neat everything is and how it functions. Just having a closer look at the electrics in here. I've got a power hook here. This is um, 1,500 watts, and that's a 2,400 watt power hook. And as you can see, they're strapped in, so I can take them out easily. Um, I can charge using the Vectron charger at the back. The van batteries in here from that, because the problem I have is on the roof. There's two flexible solar panels that are knackered. This is on the roof of the van, and as you can see, there's two very old flexi panels on there. But there's shadows across them because it's underneath the roof rack. And you don't get any power from them usually because on the roof rack, it's designed to have canoes and kayaks on. That's why the roof rack's there. So eventually, I've taken the spare wheel off the front. There used to be a spare wheel at the front there. I've taken that off and I'll probably put a big panel on there and then use the portable panels to power everything else up. So I have to think about how I can gain my power when I'm not running the engine. So all the veteran stuff's there and there is a solar MPPT. So I will change the solar panels on the roof at some point. But having these as backup is just incredible. And the other good thing with these is that our cottage where we live is on top of a hill on the Yorkshire Moors and there uh, we get power cuts. And using these two power oaks, I can run the full cottage off them if we get a power cut. So as well as being able to use them in the van, I can also use them at the cottage. And this is a friend's power oak. So the power oaks are doing various different sizes. I think the smallest ones are like, well, real small for charging your phones and things. But these are significant ones. That's a 2000 watt. And it's one of the newest ones that are out. And they all vary in price. I'll put the links in the description below to the Power Oak website. 
and you can have a look at the different prices for them but they are self-contained units they have um, they all come with a mains power supply that you can plug in and charge at home or charge it on hookup so with this these sat in the back of my van I can plug the mains charger into them plug them into this and if I get shore power on a campsite I can use this and it will charge my van and charge one of these up as well so I'm currently running this one and as you can see on the display at the bottom the AC which is like the mains power coming out of the sockets on the back which is a three pin socket and taking out the back of this into this power unit just to demonstrate it to charge this unit up and then solar going into it through this cable here is the input there of 352 watts of power from solar and the way I've set this solar up is you get this lead with your power hook and it comes with these connectors the standard uh, solar panel connectors and I've put extension leads on them and I've linked those extension leads to these connectors which will take four sets of panels so there's one for positive and one for negative negative. and what I've done with these panels to get maximum power out of them instead of running them in parallel I've actually run them in series so these four panels each one of these panels is 120 watts maximum power in the best sunlight and then back into the main connector into the back of the van through these extension leads into that unit there and as you can see it's still around input of 350 watts now if I just link them in parallel so there wasn't positive to negative I would only get probably the power of one panel maybe a bit more but having the extra power from them being linked together boosts it so it's very similar to if you think of a number of batteries in a torch where you put one battery and then you put the next one on the top you're linking positive to negative which is ups the voltage ups the power capacity of those batteries these solar panels with have been portable they're just fold up they fold back on each other and they have these fold down legs on the back and these fold down legs here just fold back out the way when you fold the panel up so the concertina together like this to pack them up and they've got a handle on the top and all the cable fits into there but with them being portable I can put them anywhere I can lay them on the grass stand them back to each other like this the other thing I like to do with these panels is I can lay two or three of them on the top of the awning when the awnings rolled out there which gets them out of the way but it'd be brilliant if you could buy an awning that was a roll out solar panel that'd be perfect for my situation imagine the size of the solar panel you get on there but until somebody invents one of them I'll use portable solar panels linked together in series positive to negative positive to negative which gives me all the power I need through that uh, spaghetti of cables into the back of the van to charge the power hook a little bit of cloud coming over so it's dropped down to 310 312 but it's still pumping out 508 watts through this which is then converting it into this power hook through the main socket into there just running the van mains charging unit the Victor tra charging unit off the power hook as you can see the uh, actual input from those solar panels is 337 watts and the output is 362 watts so we're not actually using much power from the power hook it's almost been backed up and replaced from the solar panels the other thing with having two power hooks in the back is that obviously I can drain one down if I can't have the facility to charge it I've still got another power pack but I can also charge my e-bikes from it as well or realistically because there's two sockets on the back of each of these that'll take a three pin 13 amp socket per plug I can actually run four river vans so if people want shore power and they're, they're low on power and I'm okay I can plug their leads these through an adapter into the back of these and four vans can be run off those two power hooks as well so this one here I've only borrowed I'm just using this as a, a drain for this one to see how much solar can go in while we're draining the maximum power out of it but these two are going to stay in my van or be portable to use 
at the cottage to keep the cottage powered up as and when needed. So in the box at the back there's over 500 odd um, amp power of um, AGM batteries. I'd love to change those for lithium and then now I'm going to change the solar panels on the roof to have them at the front of the van and see how, how big a panel I can get on there and then be backed up by the two power works on the wheel arches. And then that will be all the electric sorted in the van, more than I'll ever need. Sky.